Today on Awakening with Amy, the easiest way to the path of wish fulfilled. We're talking about our unlimited possibilities today. Welcome. I'm Amy Valentine here to help awaken within you your ideal life so you can be, do, and have any desire. And today we're going to talk all about the path. What is the easiest way to get everything that you desire? The path of least resistance. What if the resistance, the contrary conditions, the opposites in our life are part of the creation process? It's all part of us living from the state of being fulfilled. That's what we're going to talk about today. And it was inspired by one of my oldest and dearest friends, we talk all the time on the phone and we were talking the other day and she was telling me about this situation that was going on with her boyfriend. And just a caveat, she's totally happy, totally in love with this guy, has a great relationship. But she said there was this pattern that she was noticing, a cycle. And, and she started telling me it had to do with his work life. That she said, a few weeks go by, he doesn't say much, and then he starts really complaining about it. And she's like, what do I do with this? She's like, I'm like, she's like, I ch- she's like, I get off the phone right away, or I try to avoid it, or I just sit there and don't say anything. She's like, what should I do? And I said, well, I said, don't think about it as what I should do. Think about it as that complaining is a cry for help. I said, it's a cry for love, right? Instead of fear. And she she lit up and she's like, well, wait, what do you mean? What's that from? And I said, well, it's from A Course in Miracles. And they explain that everything is love. And if it's unlike love, then it's a cry for help. I said, so what is does that do? That puts you back in the power position instead of trying to fix it for him try to listen to the complaining. What you're doing is you're no longer resisting that story. And now you can put your focus on, okay, it's just a cry for help. I said, so do nothing with it. Just tell yourself that it's a cry for help. And she said, (laughs) she started thinking of it that way. So instead of trying to analyze why it was happening and how she created it, she was just like, okay, just let it be there. I said, let it be one option. Instead of thinking of it as final or as a cycle. I said, because now you're expecting it to happen over and over and over again. I said, so scrap that. Just let that be one quantum possibility that he complains about work. And move to that state of being that it's a cry for help. It's a cry for love. She said the next few times they talked on the phone, he was telling her funny stories about people at work. I mean, how powerful is this, right? So the issue is never an issue. The issue is the resistance helping you clarify your desire. Every desire, when it comes to you, also that desire comes with the opposite. It comes with the resistance. And as long as we don't resist the resistance, we can flow downstream towards the fulfillment of it. That's what wish fulfilled. The state of being is not about being happy all the time or being positive all the time. Wish fulfilled, Neville Goddard's wish fulfilled is that state of being, that knowing, that inner conviction that I already am everything I desire, regardless of the outer world. That's it. That's what the state of wish fulfilled is. So the desire plus the resistance is all the natural part of fulfillment. So we want to stop the you know, labeling the resistance as a problem, right? When we 
resist the resistance. That's when we stay in that desiring, that wanting things to be different. We're not accepting that all possibilities have a right to exist. And the non-acceptance is what creates the non-fulfillment. When we resist the resistance, we create the idea of I am not fulfilled. I am not enough yet. I am not who I desire to be yet. And that's what creates that feeling of doubt and fear. And it doesn't feel good, right? So, and let me read something I wrote down from scripture and then I'll get into a Neville Goddard quote. First, this is from John 8 to 4. Therefore, I said to you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe I am he, you will die in your sins. If you do not believe I am he, with a capital letter, that I am Lord, or the law of being, that was a symbolism. He, it's, and according to Neville, is your I am awareness, your human imagination, that higher you, that can resurrect any possibility, any version of you. So when we don't resist what we no longer prefer and we see the desire and the resistance as a package deal that's leading us, now we can allow our higher awareness, our I am that I am, he, to flow us down to everything we want. But if we believe that I am not who I want to be, I, it is not available to me, I am not enough, then we die to our sins. And let's read a Neville Goddard quote where he explains what that means. To sin is to miss your desire. If you do not believe you are its creator, you are missing your mark. You must assume you already are the person you want to be in order to become it. Noah Goddard. To sin is to miss your desire, to miss your mark. To not assume you already are what you want to be. That's the metaphysical meaning behind the word to sin, to go against your true nature. How powerful is that? That's what it means. That's the metaphysical meaning. That's the higher thought. So assume you are already everything that you want to be, and you won't get caught up in that real, in that negative loop, thinking that there's a pattern that I have to overcome, that I have to fix myself or fix other people or manipulate them to do what I want. No, only person, the only thing to change is you. And when we say change, it means choose. Choose what you prefer by using that resistance as a package deal. When a desire comes to me, it's a divine urge from that higher me, that oneness with the ultimate creator. And whatever I think into that divine mind, that infinite intelligence, in which I, my human imagination shares the essence of is what I create. And instead of saying, I create my own reality, tell yourself, I perceive my own reality. To create, that's all it means, is to perceive. And when you believe that you are the only creator, the one and only creator of your entire life experience, you let everybody else off the hook. You let the old versions of you off the hook, and now you can choose around any unwanted reality because now you know I don't have to resist what I don't want. I choose around it, right? You assume you already are who you want to meet, and you persist in that assumption regardless of what your reasoning mind is telling you. 
That's what Neville me- meant, right? To persist in your wish fulfilled. It's it's building that inner conviction. It's a remembering of your true nature. And we only have to persist because we had it so beaten into us that the, the ego's view of I am not enough. But when we no longer fight the ego and befriend the ego because the ego is the resistance, it's the relativity. But as long as we don't judge it as bad, or like I said earlier, as long as we don't resist the resistance, we can use it. We can use the ego to expand our consciousness, to choose another version of ourselves. And that's how we can perceive more of what we already are. That's what Neville Goddard meant. So it's about going with the flow, resisting nothing, reminding yourself that desire and resistance is part of the package. And when I follow the path of least resistance, that means I'm listening to my higher thought, my inner being that's always with me, guiding me around all the old dead conditions that I no longer prefer, right? There's freedom in that, right? See, all opposites, all contrary, even your thoughts. Remember what William Whitecloud said? We talked about in last week's video. William Whitecloud said in The Magician's Way, thoughts and feelings are not real. They are simply indicating, showing you your current assumptions, whatever you're assuming to be true in any moment. And how can you mold your life and mold your reality if you don't challenge your assumptions? You know, when we don't fight our thoughts and feelings, when we don't fight what is, meaning we don't resist it and try to fix and change it, which is saying, I am not enough, then we can use those thoughts and feelings to show us what am I assuming to be true? And do I want to choose that? That's your power, right? So stop confusing resistance with non-fulfillment. It's only the resistance that we, when we judge it as I am not, that it becomes non-fulfillment, right? So don't confuse resistance as I'm not getting what I want. No, it's leading me to everything I want because it's helping me get more clear. It's being open to the possibilities that I am infinite possibilities. And sometimes I forget that, but I am putting my attention and awareness on infinite possibilities. And that means I can be, do, and have anything. So I don't have to change the unwanted. I just let it be there. I do nothing with it. Right? So the freedom is knowing I am the one and only creator of my life experience because I'm the only one that can perceive. Right? Bondage is not knowing this or defaulting back to I am not. I am not enough. All that stuff that we absorbed, right, from our childhood. That's bondage. And the only way to free ourselves from those habits of thought that I am not what I want to be, I am not enough, is to focus on I am. I am he. I am. That is the law of being. It is the Father's good pleasure to give me the kingdom. The kingdom is all my desires. Why? Why do I even have desires? Why is there even resistance? Because it's all here for me to choose again. Right? So play the what if game. This is a really fun process I've been kind of playing with myself. What if I am already everything I desire to be? We're putting our focus on the end result which attracts our desire, right? Think about it. When we put our focus and attention on what we have to do to get it, right? That's what attracts the doubt and fear. So put your attention on the end. What is the wish fulfilled? What's the end result? And say, what if I always get what I want? What if everything's always working out for me and I just didn't know it? What if the resistance is all part 
of my fulfillment? What if that every desire came to me already fulfilled? What if more money comes to me easily? What if I just have to assume and persist in my assumption and I don't need to worry about contrary conditions? What if? Fill in the blank. You get the idea. So play the what if game. Follow the path of least resistance. That is the easiest way to be fulfilled. That is, remind yourself, the state of being, the wish fulfilled is not about the specific desire. It's about understanding that you can be and do and have anything. It doesn't matter. So the resistance is not evidence of I am not my desire. The resistance and the desire go hand to hand to help me create and mold and rearrange my imagination. And when I do that, then the 3D physical world must rearrange it around my ideal, my wish fulfilled. That's what it means to follow the path of least resistance. You surrender it all to your higher self by not fighting any contrary things, by not fighting your thoughts, by not resisting the resistance, right? By not labeling resistance as non-fulfillment. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your lovely comments. Thank you for liking and sharing the video. That's how we get our message out. And thank you to all the new subscribers. And please subscribe if you haven't already. Until next week, see you soon.